when I heard a ring at the doorbell. Mr. Flynn Othick, the world-famous Irish detective. Don't tell me. I never forget a face. You were prosecuting witness in the case of the Beckenham Strangler. No. And I have it. You were second mate on a vessel which saved me from a watery grave during the case of the Chinese river pirates. I'm afraid not. One of the Penge pickaxe gang? No. <laughs> then how the devil do you know who I am? It's written on a little card under your doorbell. <laughs> I suspected it all along. What do you want, my good fellow? Well, sir, I would appreciate if you'd be kind enough to allow me to shin up your drain pipe. And why would you want to do that? Well, it's like this, sir. It's... You see, my little daughter, Abigail, it's her fifth birthday today. And her dearest wish is for a little kitten for her present. She hasn't got a mum, you see. She has departed to a better place. God rest her soul. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, sir. As I was saying, I was passing your house with the said kitten tucked under my jacket and he suddenly leapt out and shot up your drain pipe and he's now on the roof. You see my predicament, sir? Certainly I do. Why don't you shin up and rescue the wee creature? Oh, bless you, sir. Uh, just one more thing, sir. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to give me a buck up. <laughs> it is a pleasure. Oh, don't hang about in the cold, sir. I can manage quite well on my own now. Good luck to you. And wish your little girl a happy birthday. <laughs> Salt of the earth. Restores your faith in humanity. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello. Ah. This is Flynn Othick, the world-famous Irish detective, speaking in person with his own voice. <laughs> Hello, operator. You have a call from where? Ballyskibeen in Tipperary. Uh -huh. I'll put it through. Uh. Hello? Father who? Father Monaghan. Oh, fine. And yourself? Aunt Philomena. She's what? She's dying, you say? Is it serious? <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, well, that's very sad news indeed. Tell me, does the dear lady still live in that fine grand house in the middle of her 6,000 acres of prime farmland? <laughs> she does. <laughs> no, 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 no. I haven't seen her in the past 40 years. Uh, but we're still very close. <laughs> Will you hang on a moment? <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, what's that? Oh, my cousin Seamus and Bridget are already there. Oh, well, yes. Well, in that case... <laughs> I feel it be bounden duty as a favourite nephew to come over and comfort her in the last moments. Yes. Uh, I leave for Ballyskibeen within the hour. <laughs> uh, I've nothing on at the moment. No, no, no. I, I don't mean I'm sitting here stark naked. <laughs> I mean I blow cases up. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll see you sometime tomorrow. Goodbye, Father. <laughs> Philomena, bless her. Stinking rich. Even carved up three ways. That estate's got to be worth a fortune. <laughs> I better go and pack. Uh. 
la 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 something for your daughter's birthday. Oh, thank you, girl. <laughs> thank you. Good night, dear. You. You're a tough, sir. You're a chick, sir. You're a sight, sir. You're a burn, sir. <laughs> Flinothic, your mistress's favourite nephew. Oh, come this way, sir, Your Honour. I mean, don't tell me the old lady's gone. <laughs> no, no, dear cousins. Our dear Aunt Philomena has been taken from us. A sad loss indeed. But we have to remember that the three of us must now shoulder the burden of running the estate and maintaining this fine and valuable house. <laughs> <laughs> As a butler for the past 50 years, he ought to be consumed with grief. The old cow's not dead yet. <laughs> you better tell him the news, Father. News? What news? Well, shortly after I spoke to you on the telephone, I think, your aunt sent for me and imparted some information which shocked us all to the core. <laughs> it did. That's right enough. <laughs> oh, yes. Quiet, <laughs> you old fool. Your aunt wishes me to... Um, yes, go on. ...to marry her to Lynch here, first thing tomorrow morning. Marry him? You rotten little devil. I suppose you got her into trouble. <laughs> Seven. Yes, but he's not. <laughs> we'll see what this means, oh thick. He'll become the next of kin, and we'll all be disinherited. But why should she do that to her own flesh and blood, her own kith and kin, her nearest and dearest? I tell you why. Because she hasn't clapped eyes on any one of the three of you for over 30 years. So she wants me to have the benefit of her estate. But why go to the trouble of marrying you? She could just leave you everything in her will. Oh, yes. The news lot would contest it. This way, you'll not have a leg to stand on. <laughs> this is a fine kettle of fish, I must say. Here am I, come all the way from London, expecting a funeral, and find myself in a wedding. Well, we've all been in to see her, but she has her mind made up. But that's absurd. They've only been engaged five minutes, and with the divorce rate being what it is, you can't be too careful. <laughs> you know what they say, 
Marry in haste, repent at leisure. If there's any repenting to be done, she better get on with it. According to Lynch, the doctor says she's only got a matter of days. Now, look here. You don't get to be in world famous like myself without having a gift at the blarney. <laughs> I could talk a rabbi into eating a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and have a chat with the old lady. You see, it wouldn't have occurred to any of you, but with my brilliant deductive mind, it's as plain as a bite staff. <laughs> <laughs> Fella Lynch is only after her money. <laughs> come to see you. Oh, hello, Seamus. No, 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 not Seamus. Finn, all the way from London. Oh, the vultures are gathering for the rest. Oh, how can you say that? The last thing I want is to benefit from your will. And you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Surely when I was a child, I must have given you some moments of pleasure. You gave me one moment of great pleasure. Oh, when was that, Artie, darling? The day your mother took you to live in London. <laughs> I'm only concerned in your welfare, which is why I want to ask you to reconsider your plan to get married. Why should I do that? Well, that fellow Lynch. He's a servant. He's beneath you. And if you should happen to make a full recovery, he might start demanding his conjugal rights. Be above you. <laughs> my mind's made up. Do you hear me? I'll have no more discussions. And <coughs> wait, I'll get you a drop of water. What a fearful predicament I was in. I had a motive and could easily be accused of this murder. My only chance was to take Aunt Philomena's place and hope to flush out the real killer. <laughs> if the murderer thought she was still alive, he'd have to try again. And that's where I'd have him. <laughs> if he killed me, I'd know who he was. <laughs> they'd say if they knew that I drowned their precious Aunt Philomena in the lily pond a week ago and smuggled me old mother in to take her place. Hey. <laughs> Nobody has spotted it. Not even Father Momerton. Oh, by the way, has that idiot Flynn or Tick been up to see you yet? No, not yet, son. Might be as well to keep him away from you. Fool though he is. <laughs> I'll tell them you'll be after composing yourself for your nuptials in the morning and don't wish to be disturbed until then. Just think of it, Mother dear. Once that wedding service has been performed, I'll be master of this whole estate. You'll quietly disappear. 
and the old girl will be found drowned in the lily pond. Dead of an excess of passion. <laughs> plot I had uncovered by virtue of my deductive powers. <laughs> Lynch had done away with Aunt Philomena, but there was yet another murderer in the house, the poisoner who had mistakenly killed Lynch's mother. time they'll be married and that's an end of it you know Seamus if we could talk our way into Lynch's good books we might still salvage something what and see myself tired and feathered before I give him a civil word Lynch Lynch my dear fellow we're just saying how pleased we are you're soon to become one of us isn't that right Bridget Ah, yes, indeed. We'll all be members of the same family. One for all, and all for one. We want you to feel that you can call on us with any problems that might arise. And we, in return, can call on you in times of need. What do you say to that? Go to hell. <laughs> You'll not get a farthing out of me. What? You're money-grabbing swine. I'd like to take me boot to you. If you'll excuse me. Sir, I must perform one of my last duties as butler. Oh, I'd like to ruin his nuptials. <laughs> Good morning, Father. Morning, Lynch. Morning, everyone. Father Monaghan, you're surely not going to allow this travesty to take place. Well, as your aunt's parish priest, I have no choice. That's right. And the sooner we get it over with, the better. Um, just a moment. Where's old Thick? He went for a walk after breakfast and hasn't come back yet. Then we'll just have to manage without him. Well, I'd better go and fetch the bride. <laughs> Lynch. Well, now go and put the half of it away again. We'll be saving that for the wake. Very good, sir. Ah, there's my darling bride now. Hurry, my Vorneen. I don't want you dropping dead on me. There's no danger of that. Son. <laughs> you! You're not me mammy. I'd know her anywhere. <laughs> as stupid as I thought. Stop there, or you're a dead man. Raise your hands, O Thick. I'm not O Thick. You are. Oh, 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 yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> uh, you got the drop on me, you cunning divvy. It's only his finger flim. I know, but it might be loaded. <laughs> It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> Would someone kindly explain to me what's going on? Well, it is a complicated and devious story, I have to tell you. I only hope you're able to keep up with me. Auntie, uh, what's her name? Uh, Philomena. Right. Uh, was murdered by uh, 
thingy me bob. <laughs> Lynch? Exactly. He then substituted his own mother and was able to carry out the deception since none of us had seen Auntie for many years. Uh, what happened to her? Oh. Lynch's <laughs> mother? Oh. Oh. She, in turn, was poisoned by someone unaware of the substitution. But who? The killer let slip a clue last night over dinner, which only a mind as astute as me own would be able to pick up. Someone who worked as an industrial chemist for a firm manufactured in rat poison. <laughs> the guilty party is you, Seamus. Ah, come on, Othick. I wouldn't kill me own auntie, now would I? You wouldn't. In that case, it's got to be you, Bridget. <laughs> you were up to your ears in debt. Oh, it wasn't me either, Flynn. Crossed my heart and hoped to die. It wasn't. <laughs> then by a process of elimination, there's only one remaining suspect. Myself. <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. I know I didn't do it. Did I? <laughs> And what about him? Are you out of your mind, woman? A man of the cloth. He's not going to sully his hands with murder and poison for mere monetary gain. <laughs> right, father? Wrong. <laughs> it was me. Now, put your hands up. <laughs> now, move over there, the three of you. But why, father, why? You, of all people, have the least to gain. There is something I must tell you. Many years ago, my father, God rest his soul, had a romantic entanglement with your Aunt Philomena, and I am the result. So you see, I had to stop the wedding taking place so that I could claim the estate as her son and next of kin. So now, it's curtains for you three. You know too much. <laughs> Once again, my brilliant mind had triumphed over the forces of evil. In the words of the immortal bard, Sir Albert Tennyson, he that lives by the sword shall come to a sticky end. <laughs> Here was done. <coughs> All that now remained was the formality of the reading of the will, and with the other claimants out of the way, everything was sure to come to the three of us. Uh, this will only take a moment, uh, since your late aunt's will was very brief and to the point. It simply says, I, Philomena Alice O'Thick, being of sound mind, do hereby give and bequeath my entire estate to my next of kin. That, of course, being the three of us. <laughs> well, not quite. There is something that I have to tell you. Many years ago, my father had a romantic interlude with your Aunt Philomena. I was the result. Her son and heir. What? The devil, you see. Is this the reading of the will? It is. I got something to tell you. Many years ago, my <laughs> father <laughs> and Philomena, and I'm the result. Who are you scoring for? I have something to tell you. Many years yes, ago, yes, yes, before. There's something you ought to know. <laughs> yes, many years ago, our father and Aunt Philomena were sweethearts, which resulted in him and like. Oh, <laughs> Aunt Philomena was me mammy.
Don't tell me. I never forget a face. You're one of the victims of the Moorgate murderer. <laughs> no, sir. I'm the bloke that climbed up on your roof to rescue my little girl's pussycat. Of course you are. Tell me, how is the darling child? She's got a fever, sir. Due to the fact that she has to sleep in a drafty bedroom. That is why I spent my last few bob on this roller carpet. Oh. oh, and a very fine carpet it is, too. I've got one myself just like it. <laughs> Do you have to carry it far? Uh, Twelve miles. I should arrive home by daybreak. Oh. Exhausted, but happy. Well, I'll not permit you to stagger all that way. Take my car. <laughs> <laughs> I trusted to bring you back tomorrow morning. I hardly know what to say, sir. You are a saint. Uh, be off with you now. I wouldn't lend my car to just anybody, but as a world-famous Irish detective, I had an unfailing ability. I could spot an honest man a mile off. <laughs> Where the hell's my case? <laughs> of life. Oh, no. What a pity. I've forgotten them. <laughs> Usual today, madam? No. I think I'll have one extra today, please. Charlie! Come on! <laughs> This is our latest uh, colour TV sensor. It's a Russian model. Oh, yes. yes. What's the difference between the Russian one and the British one? Well, you can watch the British set all day. Oh. And the Russian one? It watches you all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it if Thank you don't Thank you very much Thank indeed, you. sir. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> oh, good morning, sir. Can I help you? Cameras, films, projectors, portable TV sets, colour TV sets. Electronic calculators. Oh, <laughs> you've come to just the right place, sir. We've been selling electronic calculators for over 200 years. <laughs> really? Any particular uh, calculator you're after, sir? I'd like to speak to you about this calculator you sold me last week. Oh, yes. Pleased with it, are you? No. No? You're not pleased with it? Why ever not? It doesn't calculate properly. Are you sure you're pressing the right button? I mean, have you read the simple 376-page manual that goes with it? Every page? It took me four days. <laughs> What's the problem? I mean, it'll subtract, add, divide, multiply, find the square root, has a full four-key memory, a percentage key, a fixed and floating decimal point, trigonometric function, hyperbolic function, geometry function, algebraic logic, a liquid crystal display, and gives you a reading in the dark, so why aren't you doing it? It doesn't have a number nine. <laughs> Is that all? Well, it was cheap, sir, and I did tell you it was slightly imperfect. Slightly, slightly imperfect? Yes, sir. How on earth can I work out calculations with no number nine? 
Well, you can do thousands of sums without using the number nine. <laughs> I mean, you can do eight times four. Or seven take away two. I want to use a number nine. I, I, I don't want to be awkward, but it's a, it's, it's a very popular number. It's one of my favourites. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> this uh, particular model, I mean, all you have to do if you want a number nine is to press number three three times. <laughs> I've tried pressing number three. What happened? It disappeared inside the calculator. <laughs> but if I get home, where number three used to be. Oh, so it has. Yes. I wonder where it's gone. Perhaps it's gone to look for the number nine to keep it company. <laughs> oh, listen, sir. I think they've found one another. Will you let me have my money back, please? Oh, no, sir. I can't, I can't give refunds. I see. Then perhaps you'll change this Mickey Mouse model for another one. Oh, I can't do that either, sir. No, no. I don't deal in calculators anymore. Giving them up completely. And why have you given them up? Too many complaints. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into desk diaries now. Doing a roaring train. <laughs> roaring. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, sir. I'll change your calculator for one of our desk diaries. How's that? Look at this, sir. I mean, that is a beautiful piece of work. Look at that. Leather bound all the way down the back. See that? It gives all the bank holiday dates. No, I really don't think so. And it's got a wonderful coloured map of the London Underground. Well... And all the latest modern conversion tables. Very useful. Yes, yes. All right, I'll take one. And look at that, sir. Full page Saturday, full page Sunday facing one another. Oh, very handy, yes. And Mondays and Tuesdays. Mm, yeah. And Wednesdays and Thursdays. Oh, very good. Yes, I like that. I'll Thank wrap you. it for you. Yes, but... Hey! Yes, sir. Where's the Fridays? <laughs> You'd say it was slightly imperfect, sir. <laughs> Name? John and Twistle. <laughs> Murray and Twistle. Mm. Any connection? Yes. But only twice. Here we are, sir. Room 24. One of our most pleasant, if I may say so. Ah, oh, yes. Very nice, very nice. Just the job. Uh, shall I get the porter to bring up the rest of your luggage, sir? And uh, this is all I have. Oh, I see. Well, will you be requiring tea in the morning? Uh, no, actually, I won't be staying the night. Uh, that is the Inland Revenue Building over there, is it? Hmm? Oh, uh, that. Yes, yes, indeed it is. <laughs> Good gracious. <laughs> yeah. I say, you don't mean you're actually going to shoot one of Her Majesty's tax inspectors from this hotel? Well, I would have thought that was obvious. In that case, may I suggest room 36? You'll have a much better view from there. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. Action. I'll not permit you to stagger all that way. Take my car. God bless you, sir. Something. <laughs> 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 